Hello. Here I am in all my glory. Um, I wasn't actually planning on filming today, but I just feel like a lot of stuff is happening work-wise today, so. Whether I actually keep this part of the video in, I don't know. But so many people do these like, doing my makeup video things, so. So I'm very behind schedule on where I wanted to be with restocks. I'm trying not to be hard on myself about it because being good at being consistent is something that I'm trying to do, not something I'm good at doing or have perfected in any manner. So to expect myself to have like really <laughs> stuck to the exact schedule that I made was very ambitious of me. So it's gonna take longer than the like four days that I planned on it taking. By the time I've posted this, I will have turned 30. My social battery is just like not where it used to be. So I went to a party on Saturday and was like, I'm just gonna work on Sunday. Like I'll be able to get work done. And I didn't, I was so tired <laughs> the next day. And it, we weren't even there that long. We didn't see that late. We left at like 10. Um, but I'm old now, so if I'm not in bed by 8. But anyway, so yeah, I'm much further behind the schedule than I was hoping I would be. I'm just trying to really just power through it and, like I said, not be hard on myself and get as much done as possible, as quickly as possible. Which I'm always trying to find a balance of being kind to myself and pushing myself. Which is really hard to do because I feel like either I'm way too easy on myself or I'm pushing myself way too hard. And I feel like today I wasn't planning on doing like, well I wasn't planning on filming. And I didn't really have like a solid work plan, but I'm thinking that Despite me being pretty tired today, for some reason I just kind of have that motivation to push myself a little bit further. So I'm gonna try to. And then the other thing is that I am, I'm pretty sure gonna buy a car today. <laughs> Which I've had my current car. Camera. Oh no! I dropped a liquid eyeliner and it cracked at the bottom and got all over the floor, so that's nice. Yeah, I've had my current car for about eight years. So the first car I ever bought for myself was a used car, and I got swindled so bad. <laughs> I, I was like 20, maybe 21. I don't know what compelled me to do this, but like I went to a used dealership on my own, like never knowing what I'm doing. And of course they're gonna like take advantage of me because I'm a young woman and you know, I just needed a car. I mean, <laughs> cause I was walking to work at the restaurant I worked at like three miles a day just to do my like four hour shift. If I worked a night shift, I just kind of had to hope that I could get a ride home from someone. There was also times where I biked and if I, I biked, I would just bike home in the dark, but I didn't want to walk home in the dark. And I wanted, to be independent, so I wanted a car. So I got a used car. It was terrible. I don't, um, when I test drove it, it's like really embarrassing to even like admit this. When I test drove it, it made like a clinking noise. And for some reason that didn't, that didn't deter me from actually getting it. It really should have. Like I, I asked about it and then the guy, but the dealership was like, oh, it was probably like this or that and like made it seem like it wasn't a big deal. And I was like, okay, sure. Cause the car was, it, I thought it was decent. I don't know. It was maybe like $5,000. So I was just like, I need a car and this is affordable. So I'm going to get this car. And then I got it. And I feel like within like two months, like there were times where I was driving middle of the street. It would just break down, just stop working completely which is not what anyone wants, and it's especially not what someone with anxiety like me wants. So, why do I keep dropping everything? 
So in the end, it was pretty much like I spent $5,000 to have a car for like three months before I was just like, okay, I just need to buy a new car because now I'm traumatized from the old car. Ever since then, I'm like, I'm never getting a used car again. I know that they're not all that bad and that car salesman people won't always swindle you that intensely. Yeah, so I got a new car. I've had that car for a long time, but again, I was like 21 and I just needed a car. So I got like a good reliable car, but it was just the most basic model that existed. So I don't know. It's kind of just like a box that can do car things and play music, but it really doesn't have like anything else. I was just like, well, once I pay off this car, I'm gonna drive this car until it dies because it's so much money to spend on a car. And it's a Toyota, so it should like last forever. And it has, I've had it, like I said, for like eight years. It's never given me like any super problems, the things that I've needed to get fixed or just kind of like a random thing happened. Now that I'm, like I said, 30, and I've always been an anxious driver, I just, I want a car now that has like safety features because, I mean, those kind of safety features that exist now did not exist when I got that car, so I don't think it was like something I could even kind of have. I feel like backup cameras were like still not a standard thing. I wanted to get a car with safety features so that maybe I can like calm down while I'm driving for once. I'm possibly going to buy a car today, which I did a lot of research so it's not like I'm just like, I'm gonna go buy a car. I'm nervous about it. I'm just like forever afraid of car salesmen. I'm just like, I need to look my best when I go there and look professional and not look like a 21 year old person who doesn't know what they're doing and they're like, yeah, we can upsell her on anything. Which maybe they still can, but I have like a little bit more of a backbone than I did before. So yeah, I'm excited because I really like the car that I'm choosing, but I'm also very nervous for many things like getting used to driving in a new car and the experience of actually buying the car. Like I said, I didn't really have a solid plan for what I was gonna do today and I wasn't planning on filming, but I think I need to distract myself because it's, I don't have the appointment until like five more hours, so. I need to finish burning the testers that I have for 1989 candles. I did two of them yesterday. And I think they both turned out good, so I'm happy with that, but I still have like three or four more that I need to test out. So I'll probably get through like another two today and then test out the last two tomorrow. Part of the reason that restocks can take so long is that I only have so much room on my like working space that sometimes like candles that haven't been labeled yet but have already been poured take up so much space that I can't actually pour new candles. I have a couple batches that I've poured that I need to smooth out the tops of and trim the wicks and add labels to so I can get them out of the way so I have room to pour new candles and then like maybe actually finish the restocks that I said I was gonna do. <laughs> so yeah, that's generally my plan. <laughs> oh my god, seriously? I swear I don't always drop stuff this often. One thing that I'm happy about with trying out vlogging is that I used to do my makeup all the time and then quarantine happened and there just like, it didn't feel like there was a point to do your makeup because you weren't seeing anybody or doing anything. It didn't matter. But then when we could go back out into the world, I didn't go back to doing my makeup because I was wearing a mask all the time and one, I was just like, well, it's gonna cover up all the makeup anyway, so I don't need to wear it. Also, it just like, the mask would like smudge on your nose and stuff and then make the makeup just not look good. And honestly, I still wear my mask to most places. There's some places that I don't because like when I go to dance class and stuff, I don't. Because it's, it is really hard to work out with a mask on. <laughs> so these vlogs have given me a reason to do my makeup more regularly, which I actually enjoy doing. 
but it just for so long felt like there wasn't a point to actually doing it anymore. I know in my last video I said that I wasn't sure how much personal stuff to share in these. Apparently today I'm just gonna share a lot of personal stuff. <laughs> so I've always had like a difficult time with exercise as a lot of people do. I'm really glad that I started taking dance classes because it's an enjoyable way to exercise. So I'm only doing two one hour classes a week, which like I do get a good workout from it, but, but there's a lot of things with dance that really rely on you being strong and flexible, which are two things that I'm not particularly excelling at. So because I really enjoy the dance classes and I want to get better and have more ability to do like different moves and stuff. I wanted to do more like strength training and stuff classes outside of dance. Right now I'm kind of like shopping around for classes that I enjoy. Last week I took a Pilates class, which I didn't love and Pilates is hard, but I had a little bit easier of a time doing it than I thought I would, which means that dance is helping, which is nice. But I didn't particularly love the vibe of the class. I might still go back because I don't, like, it was fine. I don't need to absolutely love it. I still wanted to see what else is out there. So yesterday I tried a, a yoga class, which every time I've done yoga in the past, I just didn't really like it. But I actually thoroughly enjoyed this yoga class, which surprised me because I don't know, I've just never found one that I actually liked. <laughs> I, like I was saying, um, yeah, I did that yoga class and I really enjoyed it, so I think I will go back to that. I mean, it makes sense, but when I did the Pilates class, my abs were <laughs> sore for like four days. And then now doing this yoga class, my shoulders and like everything up here is really sore because we were in downward dog a lot. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. It's been nice to be like more in tune with my body through exercising because I honestly never thought there would find any source of exercising that I thoroughly enjoyed. So it's nice to have something. Yeah, now that we have life story time out of the way, I'm gonna change and then start getting to work. Okay, so these are the batches of candles that I have finished. These ones I've trimmed the wicks and I've started smoothing out the tops, but as you can see, some of them still have like little air bubbles so I need to finish smoothing those out and then for these I just need to actually trim the wicks and then deal with things like that. <laughs> I guess let's get these to a place where they can be labeled. So most of what I poured before is looking like it has smooth tops now. This one is being so stubborn. <laughs> um, and then these ones need a couple more rounds of smoothing, though these look okay, but still need a little bit of help. So I like every scent that I make because if I didn't, that would be very strange. But um, this is a batch of Sweet Nothing, and it's interesting because like I have my all-time favorites that like stay my favorites forever, and then I have like phases of kinds of scents that I like, and I'm having a moment right now with Sweet Nothing. I don't know, it's making me so happy right now. Okay, so these ones are gonna need like another round or two, I think, of the heat gun. The other ones are in a pretty good position, I think, now to be labeled. So, let's get to work on that. Mostly, I don't remember what I'm doing. Sometimes when you're melting the tops, because the heat gun does blow out a lot of pressure, it'll like, the wax can splatter onto the rim of the candle sometimes. So, check and see, and if it did, I'll just wipe it off.
Well, I was hoping that I'd have more Sweet Nothing labels already made because my printer has been going insane. So I was hoping I wouldn't have to print more, but I do, so. Okay, well thankfully my printer actually printed, and it printed mostly aligned, so yay, okay. I did have labels already printed out for those ones, and... working on filming multiple things right now and again since I'm doing it all of all of it on my phone it's kind of hard to like keep track of everything and organize it so I'm a little stressed out about that I just filmed some stuff for the 1989 pop-up video that I'm gonna be doing which means I have a bunch of stuff all over the place and I need to not have stuff all over the place because I'm really just trying to do restocks and I keep not doing it for one reason or another and I really need to do it and I two Fridays from now is the date that I gave myself of like it all needs to be done like it all needs to be done and I'm really hoping I can just do it and stick to that day so I'm gonna try to get as much done today as possible, which is exactly what I said yesterday, and that didn't go well. I've got water heating, so that's the first step. I need to do a lot of stuff. Apple cinnamon flavored dog nut? Dog nut? Oh, where are you going, Archie? Where are you going? What are you doing? Come on. I'm not going upstairs. Yeah, are you excited? Yeah. Okay, goodbye. Like I said, I've got stuff everywhere. Um, I haven't moved the candles that I already labeled, so I need to put those on the shelf so I can move the jars closer so I can pour. So I just need to clean, like, this whole thing. And then, Archie's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with him. But this, what is this? It's in my way. I need it to not be there, so. I don't know. We're just gonna try to clean and get stuff ready. <laughs> So I cleaned up this area, have one row of jars to go, Archie's sleeping. I started packing up perfume samples, got everything on the 
shelves. This is still here and it's probably going to stay here. <laughs> and I have two pots of wax melting. But now I am at an impasse because <laughs> this box of wax is pretty much almost empty. They're 45 pounds and they're downstairs. And like I have carried them up the stairs before but I do not enjoy it. So I need to decide if I have the strength to bring it up the stairs or not. That this is up to temperature now. Yeah. So I can pour two full batches. Cardigan and champagne problems. So I used to be like really nervous every time I had to order any supplies because it's just, you know, spending a bunch of money that you don't know if you're gonna make back. And I still get nervous, but Honestly, I feel like it's not nearly as bad as it used to be, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> like, in general, it's probably a good thing to get over, but I don't want to get, like, too loosey-goosey. Which I know isn't going to happen. I generally am very money conscious, so I don't think it's actually going to happen, but, like, I'm always afraid that just gonna spend too much money and like not worry about it when I should be. And I also really should make a better <laughs> system for this because sorting through it like this probably isn't the best way. Well I know it's not the best way for me to be doing this. I'm also hoping that I remember all of the sense I need for these because I don't want to go through all No, nope, I need to look at what they are because I don't know that I actually remember all of it. So I haven't said anything online because I don't know when it's actually going to happen, but the time is coming where I'm going to have to like maybe discontinue some things because the fragrance oils got discontinued. I don't know, I don't want to, but on the two on the chopping block are champagne problems and cardigan. And I'm hoping that I can figure something out that's like close enough where you can't really tell the difference, but I haven't messed with that yet. So yeah, as of right now, I have like enough fragrance oil to make a few more batches. I have enough to make more of cardigan than I do champagne problems. And like I said, I am apparently having to go through all of these again because I forgot one. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm gonna have to find some dupes for fragrance oils so I can keep making this. Okay, so pouring these is going to be the end of this vlog, I think, because it's been like a couple days of filming for it, and like I said, it's really hard to keep track of all of the videos I'm doing, so I feel like I just need this one to be done so that, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do to keep track or if I'm going to get something separate to film with that isn't my phone. Since I'm like still getting used to all of this and like YouTube videos in general, I keep forgetting about like the interactive part. Since I just kind of keep like filming my day, which is fine, I know that's what people do. Yeah, if there's something specific that you want to see or you have questions about anything, Please let me know in the comments or pretty much always responding to um, direct messages on Instagram. I don't know, because for now I'm just kind of doing whatever feels slightly interesting. And yeah, I guess I just feel like I don't know what to even talk about a lot of the time. I can talk about like what I'm doing, I think, until it gets too repetitive. I don't know, it's weird, like that's kind of just what vlogging is. And like, I don't have a problem 
watching other people's vlogs that are like literally just them doing work or living their life and not something like big has to happen every time and it's still entertaining. I don't know why I'm holding myself to a standard that's more than that. I think it's interesting because I feel like the normal progression of things is that you start off really nervous doing something new like this and then progressively get more comfortable. But I feel like for me, I was just like in a mood when, <laughs> when I did like the first video. Was like kind of nervous, but I feel like not nearly as nervous as I've been since. But yeah, I don't know why I've gotten like progressively more self-conscious as I've been doing these, but they are helping with me being productive, so like I still want to do them, but I just like don't ever know what to talk about. So yeah, since I don't want to try to carry the 45 pound box of wax up the stairs, I think for making candles and stuff and working on restocks, I'm gonna call it a day as well as the vlog. Work on restocks more tomorrow after my husband brings up the box for me. So yeah, like I said, I have a couple other videos that I'm working on simultaneously, um, but I'll try to keep doing like a weekly vlog of just like what's generally going on. So yeah, again, if there's anything you wanna see, please let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Goodbye.